right. Welcome to the downside. I hope you didn't shut it off from that long held note. We're going to keep it in. Here's the deal, guys. Uh, 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 this We're not sure when we're releasing this, so we're going to make this evergreen. It's going to be this year. Don't worry. Great. Lucas was like, what? <laughs> I, I got tickets to sell. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, uh, here's the deal. Russell is, uh, I imagine this is going to come out when it's okay to say. Russell booked <laughs> the understudy. Uh, he's going to be understudying uh, Josh Gad. For the Broadway production, ho, ho, ho. you tell soul. I'm telling everybody. I'm telling everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, Josh Gad in what is it called? Page Gutenberg. Gutenberg, because I forgot. Gutenberg the musical, <laughs> very exciting. Um, he's still part of the podcast. He swore to me. He swore to me over drinks. He's not leaving. But uh, we have a couple episodes uh, where he's not here, and I wanted to other first. I, I wanted to get. A, a co-host, and for, I, I reached out to Lucas. I like having people who've done the show before. Lucas, uh, uh, you may know him from his, his live episode that we did. Yes. Uh, we talked all about his uh, his rehab and uh, uh, and things okay. Things are great. That's it's too bad. It could have been a fun episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you'd realized, so I'd be like, Eagle, Ooh. don't even bother coming. We're doing a crazy episode today. Oh, my God. <laughs> the worst part was that I'd just be like, I haven't left my house. This is the first time I left my house. <laughs> um, Eagle... Is our is our guest just to a certain extent? Uh, uh, he is. He said he texted me this. Here's my. This has got to stop. He texted, "Hey, running a little late, but I took an Uber because I love you." Mm. And for a second, my heart went, "Aw." I said, "What time are you gonna get here?" Four for a three thirty show. That's not love. Mm-mm. That is that is toxic <laughs> thinking to think that's love. That's not love at all. No. I told you, take a helicopter. You love me. Thirty minutes late. That's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> You better be taking an Uber. What was the other option if you didn't take an Uber? Yes. You'd come tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> we confirm this. Oh, he's lucky. He's I funny. Love, I love an abusive, uh, someone who's abusive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, so what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about a comedy club. Now, I've talked about this comedy club before. I think there was one clip where I beeped it, then another where I said, ah, fuck it, just leave it in. This was at a time I was kind of working there once in a while, I, uh, uh, and then I stopped I love your shoes. Your shoes are, are hamburger seeds. Thank you. Oh my Very cool. The, the, my favorite. Uh, uh, so we're going to talk about it. Yes. We want to go in the depths because it has a deep history. Like this, and, and I already know the title of this is going to be called The Worst Comedy Club in the World because I think there's something so special about this. I think it, 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 it's, this is like the real convergence of like capitalism uh, and comedy and tourism and just like the the worst manifestation of all these things, um, where where the art is so so low on the totem pole, yet all these great comedians that you know have passed through these doors. Who are we talking? Hannibal Buress, yes. Buress, uh, uh, Nate Bargatze. I've heard Pete Holmes used to stop by here. Uh, uh, Bill yeah. Burr couldn't get in. Bill Burr. That's how popular yes. this club is, and that's the story we'll be talking about later. Um, but you've never been there, right, Paige? No. And uh, it's moved many times. It's changed names. So while we wait, f- while we wait for Eagle, and don't worry, we're going to cut. I'm not going to make you guys sit through this long intro. So but, uh, this is a special episode. We're going to talk about the downsides of this particular comedy club. And if it does well, I have this fantasy where this becomes a spinoff, and I get to talk about. I get to talk to other comics from this era because it's a, it's a long swath. Luis Gomez used to book it, yes. uh, uh, and and he's he's a he's a figure, a very popular figure in comedy, and it stretches back and it's it's old comics, young comics, uh, now rich comics, uh, struggling comics, dead comics, a lot of dead comics, a lot of dead comics. Rest in peace, rest in peace, Kenny Ortega, man, yep. and Mike DiStefano. And right, right. I didn't know he was a guy. Huge. Guy. Really, mm-hmm. and he was he. Did he just die of natural causes, or did he was it drugs? I believe he had AIDS. So oh, he had AIDS or HIV or something. One of one of the yeah. Really, yeah. So, but he had it for like twenty years. But you know, like, sure, sure. Um, and and we have Paige here to make sure we don't get too lost in the weeds. We explain things so Paige can understand them. Um, not ah, uh, God. Okay, so first we have to come up with. Two things. One, 
this is this is how low the budget is for the podcast. Paige is our lawyer. I think <laughs> I'm serving Paige, us legal <laughs> counsel today. <laughs> Paige, like, she's like, I Googled it. She sent me an article that I read the title of that said, say <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. Yes. But uh, if we don't use the name of the, the club, then we don't have to say allegedly. already did, though. We did? Yeah. You just... Oh, I didn't I say I want to call this... I want to call it the worst comedy club in the world. No, nope, you said allegedly. it after. Oh, allegedly. No. What did I say? <laughs> you said the name of the club already did i both of you did yeah no we son didn't. of you have to bleep it no way <laughs> I don't that, well that's why Paige is here <laughs> i don't I, uh, even remember saying it i feel <laughs> gaslit i really like i thought i was being I roll, do back I. Tape. roll back the tape <laughs> <laughs> all right well oh, wow thanks dave colombo for editing this one <laughs> heavily um so all right let's come up with a name Sure. Because we thought we would call it its old name, which which we decided was too close. We can't use any acronyms. Is that what that's called? Yeah. No, it's not um, the acronyms. Uh, I'm trying to think of comedy. Like, I, we, So we talked about when I tried to name a comedy show way back in the day, you'd Google it and everything's been done. I, like, I thought I was a literal genius for coming up with brouhaha. <laughs> brouhaha is a real world. It's a crazy word. It yes. exists in the lexicon. And it, there's been 28 brouhaha's yeah. all over the world. So, but I feel like we can use a name like that. Yeah. Like a bruha, brouhaha doesn't slip off the tongue. I no. It should be short. Uh, uh, Why don't we just say something that's like completely not it, but is the, the, sh- the idea of it, like McDonald's. Or like something that's like we all agree. Or Corporate evil. overlord. I yeah, see, something that's an evil capitalistic thing. You know, like. Sure, sure. Uh, okay, McDonald's. Uh, we could do McDonald's. I think that's fun. I do think it's fun. And so, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, and then I guess we can call the owner Ronald. <laughs> Ronald. Is Ronald. McDonald's going to come after us now? I mean, maybe. <laughs> come for us, please. <laughs> that's going to make, that's going to do some good movement. If we can get in trouble with the arches, that's, yeah. that's great for our careers. <laughs> so... The the thing I we, we can mention now is that you you still let me just say I used to work at McDonald's a lot. Yes. And and we'll 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 talk about that. We'll go into how we went into it. But let's talk specifically, you still work at McDonald's. McDonald's is my And, and by the way, yes. both. The the real one, McDonald's and McDonald's. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh so so doing this, because when I asked you, I said, Oh, I should check. Like, are you okay? Because don't get me wrong. This is a stage. Mm-hmm. This is people with feelings and who can laugh. And, and there can be some money in it. Yes. So, so why are you doing this? Okay, here's my thought on it. If this goes viral and it's so big that Ronald f- finds out and I get fired, you'll feel bad enough to help me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I did not know that was a game. Yeah, yeah. no. Uh, I, <laughs> again, I don't like that's the if it gets that big and it's getting that many numbers, you know, maybe you can maybe there's some way you can help me if I'm completely now destitute. I know? will I will give you all the ad money we get from this episode, which is the equivalent of how much I made my first year working at McDonald's. Zero dollars. <laughs> Zero dollars. <laughs> um. So so stay tuned. Listen, I know this isn't a regular episode. I know, I know some of you are, are in it for Russell, but I promise there's going to be a lot of good stories. And uh, uh, also, real quick, join the Patreon. Patreon.com slash downside. You get bonus episodes. My exclusive to the Patreon, clean comedy special, The Rats Are In Me. Uh, uh, we're, we're so close to getting this merch done. I know I've said it for a while, but ultimately you get to support the show. And Russell and I, were going to start recording more Patreon-exclusive episodes. Um, that's just the two of us getting into the weeds. And uh, and then, Paige, tell people about the new Instagram page. Oh, yes. Follow us at, um, at the Downside Pod on Instagram. We're posting new clips, old clips, behind-the-scenes stuff. Mm-hmm. Everything else in between. Fun comments. And, and submit us. To, that's the place. Message your This Has Got to Stops. Message any thoughts you have. Um, uh, suggestions for Lucas what to, what to do once he's fired from McDonald's. If I get fired from McDonald's for this, it's going to help me. Probably. So that's all that. That's all I, <laughs> I keep saying that to myself because uh, I need out. But I, it feels like I'm going to have to get kicked out. Well, yes. Well, that's the thing. I, I have... Um, I, 
originally I, I used to go back to McDonald's. It got worse. It moved locations. Got worse. Yes. And but I still was like, I'm gonna use this as a space to work out new material. And then for me, my like true full dropping off point was a things stopped running on time. B and this was my my final thing was they dropped checks on me. Now checks is where I started. This is it's a stupid system, but I guess it has to happen. Comedy clubs are all about the turnover. They want to have new shows. They want to start the next show immediately because people have a cover charge. They buy their two-drink minimum. And this particular place, they're trying to make money. Get yes. it done. Roll it over. And there's this like general fear, I guess, the comedy clubs have that the patrons are going to just leave without paying. So they, they feel like they need to do the entire check process during the show. Oh, it's, it's a, there's another reason, too. Tell me. The other reason is that it is a benefit to the waiters there because people are not reading them well enough. So then they add on their own 20% on the 20% that's already added mm. onto the gratuity of the thing. So basically, if you give people a time when there's nothing else happening, people will go, oh, gratuity's added. Sign. Yeah. So they are all looking to try to make that kind of extra money in that way. Yes. So, and it's known as the check spot. They normally give it to new comics. And, I mean, the crazy part is they don't pay. A lot of clubs don't pay the check spot, which is crazy because you're literally on stage witnessing the club make their money. I've never thought about it like that, but it is gross. Yeah. That you actually think of because you're just looking at it, you go, Okay, so this table right here is 120. This is another 120. This is another 100. Like, and then you're on there getting zero. Zero. And it's a tough spot, and no one wants to do it. You're doing them a favor, but they're acting like they're doing you a favor. And for the audience, it's terrible because they're, they're just witnessing how badly they've been ripped off. And so they go, you know what? Well, maybe it was worth it. And then they look up at you, the worst comic on the lineup, and they go, what? This is what I paid for? So they're mad at you? Yes. And uh, it really sucks. And like a, a generous host will let the checks drop and then bring you up, uh, but eventually you get tired one day and you just bring them up and you say fuck them, let them quit. Yeah. And uh, and they also they don't drop it like like gradually. There's no like wave. Some no. clubs are good about it; they'll do it gradually. But like 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 not great clubs, which um, I McDonald's, were, mix, like McDonald's, McDonald's, it was the most brutal of all the ones. They'll, they'll go in the front row and block half the audience, and it's a hell hellscape. So uh, uh, we're about to be joined when we jump after the music. We're going to be joined by, with, with, with Eagle Wit. Uh, we're both of a certain generation of this club. Yes, we're all but, the same. But, a, but a stretch, the stretch is a little, so, so we're going to get into the weeds. Again, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. And tell us if you dig this episode, because we'll be making more. And uh, this is The Downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. We're here joined finally <laughs> by Eagle Wit. Hello, how are you doing, Eagle? I'm good. How are you? Uh, could we have to say congrats. Yeah. Congratulations. On the engagement. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that look? You con- <laughs> confusion. I mean, it was so... What else what happened you guys to you? I didn't know were going to congrat me. There's another thing, too, but I didn't know if you guys knew that. I was like, I don't know what they're congratulating me on. What's the other thing? I don't know. It depends when this comes out. I might not be able to say. It's going to come out in a bit. What's a bit? Uh, it could be a month and a half, two months. Oh, I got... Hey. Fuck hey. yeah. Hey. Their engagement, so I'm hell. It's <laughs> huge. Thanks, man. That's funny. That must be tough to pretend the engagement matters more to you. <laughs> <laughs> did um, I do a good job just now? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel like I feel like I was trying. I was, did I do a good job? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Let's run it back. All right, ready? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 congrats. <laughs> I, I, I do, I feel like it's such a good lead, and now that you're engaged, to tell uh, one story. So just so you know, we ha- we recorded a little intro before you got here. For legal purposes, we're calling it McDonald's. Okay. And the owner is Ronald. That sounds right. That sounds right. It Can't felt get right. By McDonald's, that's reasonable. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Legal yeah. purposes, we're gonna call it another business that we could get sued by. <laughs> yeah, but th- if they sue no, us, no, that's I know, awesome. I know. Yeah, that'd only be good for us. <laughs> yeah. So, I remember once because when I started working at McDonald's, you were kind of done with McDonald's, but I remember you came by once, and 
we were waiting outside and and you're engaged now it's gonna go great i'm sure it will have made it by the time this comes out <laughs> but but th- i think three women passed eagle and eagle i think got into each of their dms <laughs> and i mean i've never seen i've never seen game like this and you know these are the circles i run and it's not people with game but but every person that went by you had a hit on them successfully and this is the one i remember the most so there's this woman walked by and they're going to take like a sh- sh- the worst shit of their lives, <laughs> like the, the worst, the worst shit of their the lives. Grossest bath McDonald's bathroom you've ever been to. I used to, I used to, because I was so scared about wearing shorts on stage. I would change from shorts into pants in that bathroom, and I would do it like putting my shoes and like taking the. I've pant, done that in that bathroom. And you keep your feet on the shoe because it's it's covered in every liquid, yeah, yeah. all the liquids. Ugh. And uh, this woman came out, and you were like, "Hey." Uh, can, I, can I get your Instagram? And she said, oh, thank you. My man's in there. And you said, can you do me a favor? And I was like embarrassed on, on his behalf. He's like, can you do me a favor? Tell your man he's the luckiest man in the world. And she went, all right, tell me your Instagram. <laughs> and I was like, no. Oh. Wait, he is, the in, coolest thing he I've is ever seen. in the room. <laughs> he is in the room. <laughs> it shocked me, man. This is hilarious. That's an amazing move. And because if they aren't actually, if they their man isn't in the other room, I would have yeah. Like, I would have to know a woman move. for five years, and then at like an office party, <laughs> we're in line, and I I touch her elbow maybe. Yeah. Oh, hi. That's incredible. so. Have you ever has a guy ever punched you? Well, well, the amazing thing is like I don't remember saying that, but that sounds like me. Is that <laughs> yeah, what yeah. Say. And it's like, the thing is, it's a punch. It's a it's a punch proof move, because when you come, you're like, hey, buddy, I'm complimenting you. You did a great job. You have game. I don't have game. You're hot. You got this girl. Good job. I'm a loser. She doesn't want me. You know what I mean? Like it's like a it's like a weird compliment to him if he takes it the wrong way. And then if he goes too crazy, it makes her look at him sideways. Where it's like, but I'm not. Am I? Am, am I not making you the luckiest man in the world? I don't understand. It's like a whole mind fuck. Of like, how mad could you get? You can't even express your anger. We should just turn this into like a, a pickup advice <laughs> podcast. That was really popular for a while. Like, guys, oh, I yeah. feel like you could do that. I could, but it's yeah. like I don't know. People wouldn't like it. No, they would love you. You would, you would be you would just have a really bunch of red pilly kind of yeah that's yeah, a, yeah, yeah yeah poor poor kids are like Eagles told me to. You think you know what the problem is? People aren't going to do it the way you give them advice to do of it. Of course not. They're you know what I mean, like you're like out. do it like this, and then they do it in like this terrible way, and then everybody's like, "I learned from Eagle," and it's like that's not what I said to do. I didn't say to do that. Yeah, but I think with all that stuff, it's like a big part of the equation is looks. Absolutely. And like you have a, you're you trying have, to fuck. You have you're a, trying to fuck, and I'm with it. You, you have <laughs> lo- you have like long hair. You have a a. Feminine in like a in a not scary like energy. I know what you mean. And I think there's something about you that it's like, okay. Somebody told me once, and I, I find this to be very true. You could chime in if it's not true. But <laughs> she has a boyfriend. You leave her alone. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not are you? Her. God damn. No. This guy are you gonna stop. tell her? Tell her to tell him he's a he's the <laughs> lucky. He is the lucky. He is. is. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram now. <laughs> um, no, I was gonna say somebody told me that uh, that girls either like guys that are like super masculine or super feminine, but in between is what girls go. Ah, it's not all that. But like they like essentially like feminine presenting men or very masculine presenting men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More than the in betweens. Sure. And I kind of if you think about like who like everybody's like man crush Monday is, it usually is a guy that's either like super pretty or super rugged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. What would you say? Which side of the spectrum are you on, Lucas? Autistic. <laughs> That's hot. Though. That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. So, so uh, as I said, this is a very special episode of of the downside because I do want to have Eagle. I want to have you on a, a, a regular episode as well. But we want to talk about McDonald's. allegedly the worst comedy club in the entire world. So I figure we should start. By saying how how we started there, I'll go first because I, I I was dating a comic, Ooh, and uh, what comic were you dating? What? <laughs> and, uh, 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 I was trying to think of another McDonald's character, the Hamburglar, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh, I know who you're talking about from that description. <laughs> and, <laughs> <Big> cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
She there's some names we can say. I think we're safe to say uh, Jazz, yep. who worked there. She was the floor manager. No idea who you're talking about. And uh, <laughs> uh, she she went up to Jazz, and this is what I was told. I wasn't there for this, and she said, uh, "Hey." I'm fucking this new comic. Could you give him an audition spot? And she was like, fine. And uh, uh, and then I got an audition spot. Wow. Way to fuck your way up in this business. <laughs> yeah, right? And, but but I, I remember an early lesson. This was like for early comedy. I was new. I was so new. And I was theatrical enough to like do fine. But I had a joke about, um, <laughs> I said, I never know what to do with a woman's hair during fellatio. So I just ended up braiding it. And I went on from there. And the joke like bombed, and I went up to uh, uh, the Hamburglar, and I said, "I said that joke is so good." And she was like, "They don't know what fucking fellatio is, you fucking idiot." And I was like, "Oh right, like different rooms, absolutely uh, different." Fo- I mean, most people at the room probably didn't know English, period. Yeah. So I had to do now when I do the joke, I do a full act out. I go, "I don't know what to do with a woman's hair during." <laughs> 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 oh, Very funny. Me- <laughs> what does that make me? <laughs> JK, JK. So, how did you? How did you start? What year? That year? That was pages on I'm pages sweating. on pages on lawyer duty. She's, <laughs> she's 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 guarding us. We couldn't get shot callers in time to yeah. to shock people. No, I'm whenever- that is that's how I yeah. laugh sometimes. <laughs> you know how I like to laugh? It's an old school way of laughing. Ha 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 ha. ha. Um, <laughs> what year did you start? Whoa! Whoa! Oh know? my God! <laughs> son of a bitch! God! Uh, 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 man. Not that that would have anything to do with what we're we talking about. We have to about. do it as a game next time to have a shot caller. Yeah. I really think it would Here's be the thing. so good. I can tell you what year I started that. Which is a completely different venue sure. than what we're talking McDonald's about. McDonald's is what I meant to say. When did you start at McDonald's? Oh, yeah. You don't need to know when I started that. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Nothing at all. That's right. Uh, McDonald's. I started at McDonald's in uh, 2016, 2015 or 2016. Great, great. Yeah. And what about you? Uh, when I first started going, going there, I, was, I went with Rose, Rosebud. Uh huh. Because Rosebud was just finally working there, and every name we say, and this is going to start like this. I went with Penny. Okay, we're going to do it. Here we go. Yeah, but this podcast, you guys just got to bleep everything out. It's going to be a lot of beep, beep. You she does. You know, she doesn't. This is just the part of her life that she doesn't. like. No, these just like so. Okay, let let me just see if I can like capture a little bit of history. So it used to be called something else. And it was like, a, a, it's changed locations many times. It's something like, else. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was called Burger King. <laughs> Burger King. It was called Burger King. Um, not Roy Rogers. And uh, <laughs> and and well basically well it was done. like, I, I actually went to it when I was in college, I think freshman year, because there was a karaoke they had like a karaoke bar at some about point. Right. And we went there as a karaoke and had jello shots and it was a different location. But it, it, it's, it's when you go to Times Square, there's people that are barking you into clubs. Barking meaning they're trying to sell tickets. And these people are sometimes not even associated with the club at all. They're just hired separately. They'll tell you Kevin Hart's going to be at McDonald's. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They actually look at you. They see what you look like. And then they say whatever they think you want. So yes. if white people walk by, it was Louis C.K. If black people went by, it was Chappelle. Like yeah. if it was Hispanic people, they would say Fluffy. Like yeah. they legit- Keep going. Indian? Aziz, 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 Russell Peters. Russell Peters. But Russell I, Peters. I, I was, uh, yeah, I was. <laughs> I had to pause for fun. <laughs> like, like, I couldn't. There are none. But like, yeah. Um, about Asian? You got, you got some Asian comics? Yeah. Yeah. No, you know who it would be? It would be a uh, 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 Ali Wong that fan. Oh, that, that fan. That fan. That fan would have been. That's been the, that's real race. You just see anyone Asian? Like we got that fan tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, shout out that fan and. Um, you got somebody Native American? We got a comedian named Eagle? I don't know. <laughs> hey, that's true. Yeah, yeah. But, it, it, but like, it's so, these guys, it's amazing. They, this is how busy Times Square is because these guys are not, like, smooth or aggressive. There's one guy, he literally has a light that, like, flashes in your face. That's how aggressive we're talking. Like, like the way you'd get a deer, like, in a trap. <laughs> it flashes in your face. They go, comedy? And these are people who didn't make plans. They're drunk. They have a date. They want to impress them yes. and think this is going to be somewhere nice. Yes. 
So we all started at McDonald's when it was at the at the 47th Street location. Is that correct? 47th and Broadway? Something like that. Yeah, I guess so. We yeah. weren't there before. It used to have that's different That's where the locations. McDonald's is. <laughs> yeah, that's where the McDonald's is. <laughs> you have to have specifics. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's one block. Down. I think it might have been at a different location when me and Lucas started. Yeah, we had an elevator. Wow. I think we had an elevator. Yeah. We had an elevator, which was... It was on 42nd, I think. Or, or yes. not. Was it, it on 42nd? Yeah, so it was... It, it was, Maybe not. It was the grossest thing ever, and it was it grosser than the one I know. Way grosser. Oh, what was grosser? Describe it to me. So you walk into this place. It, the walls are this like orangish yellow, right? Like they haven't been painted in a long time. There's there's like flyers of shows that don't exist anymore all over yeah. the walls. There's like pamphlets, right? And then there's a service elevator. I can't remember that, that well. That, that opens up, too. and then you get, and then. 20 people that just got sold tickets go and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this there right? Was Is this right? Elevator. Like, they yeah. don't know where they're going. I see. And then they get pushed into the elevator and they open up onto the thing and then it smells like paint mm-hmm. or bleach. Yeah. Oh, God. And were those shows good at all? Not from my. See, I was I was there for literally a second and then it moved to the other location. That's like okay. I auditioned yeah. there and then it moved to the second location. And you auditioned. For Ronald, uh, no, no, oh, a different person. I auditioned for the Hamburglar. No, I auditioned for the Hamburglar. That wore a suit and he was big. Yeah, he made the thong song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a big, a big dude. The artist who made the thong song. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I think we can say. Yeah, he'd be okay with that. Yeah, Cisco. Yeah, auditioned yeah. Cisco. Who uh, uh, who's, who's, who's been there a long time? He Very was the Booker time. at the time. Yes. Yeah. And was he? Because we're, we're he's he's so sweet to me now. He's such a nice guy. In the, but the, yes. the when I first met him, he was harsh in a way that I sometimes miss in comedy because mm-hmm. it kept people in line. Yep. Uh, but, but some honest. of those older dudes were very harsh. And especially like as the, like they if if I went long, I mean they, they put me in my place. Oh, and he yes. once said to me, he said, if, if, I, if you're still working here in three years, <laughs> I'll come up behind you with a shotgun and blow your head off. <laughs> which and is what you need. Which is what I need. Like and, it, and it motivated me. I said, well, I better succeed so I don't get killed. Yeah. Uh, but was, when, when he auditioned you, was he like cold? Or were you, cool, were you the cool guy on the scene by this point? No, no, I was, he, no, no, no. I was like a, a month into comedy. Like I was like so young into comedy. I was not the cool guy at all. I... Uh, Nick Alexander recommended me. I was just hanging. People tell you, you know, in the beginning, they're like, hang out at comedy club. So I go to hang out there and I'm sitting in this like weird makeshift green room that you guys had. Yes. And they're like, oh, we don't have the check spot person is not here. And then Nick's like, oh, Eagle's funny. And I'm like, yeah, I'm funny. And then he was like, all right, you're up, kid. And I go up and I fucking got laughs, you know. And he was one more thing. I don't think I was one month in, but I was less than a year for he sure. Was, he was doing the pit. That was the best thing he was doing. Yeah, like I was easily like maybe six months in. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, got in. And he was like, oh, hey, hey, you can come back. And I was like, all right, cool. And I thought I was on top of the world. I was it like, sounds yeah, a little more like OC. Yeah. That impression. You Listen, man, I'm doing impressions. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the dick. Yeah. You were there slightly before him. I was just showing up occasionally, and I was doing the same thing. Um, I got passed, and then I never got sent an avail email or text. Oh, yeah. You got to fight for that avail. Right. I never got – like, they're like, you're in, and then never again. And I was like, well, I guess I'm not. Like, I didn't, You got to be like, hey, man, you, can you give me something I could send avails to? Or Yeah, and they didn't do that at that time. They didn't give me any – they were just like, you're all what good. Was it you'd like then – like, I remember when I started working at McDonald's, I was like starting to do other rooms. There was a comic who told me, oh, you should stop telling people you work at McDonald's. They will judge you negatively. Which I always Back disagree then, with. I disagree with to this day. I disagree. Of course, I did, I, I just I think you should work. Yes. And this yes. comic who said it to me, I was like, oh fucking. And that room does make you, you stronger. It makes you stronger. Yes. But back then, what did it have the same stink on it? Did it yes. get worse over the years? Better? No. It it so when we all started, there was a we don't care if you're. Uh, Original or good, we just care if you do well. Mm-hmm. Oh. It was really, really, really bad at that time. Like, they did not care if you went and did an Eddie Murphy bit. 
they would just be like, "Are you doing full well? on Eddie Murphy?" Yeah. I mean, I think I think that's how McDonald's is permanently. I yeah. think. I don't know. I don't. I doubt that's changed. I it's feel like changed. the whole time we were there, it's been it was like that. It changed in the sense that people aren't really wrecking those guys anymore. Uh, okay. Okay. But I do remember uh, one time I saw. I saw a comic, and I won't say this comic's name because I, f- I feel bad for them, but they did. They, I saw them do a bit. And then the next day, I saw Kareem Green do it. And I know, I know it's Kareem's bit. And I saw Kareem do it, and I was like, beat for beat. Beat for beat. And I was like, what the fuck? And I know, maybe, I don't think I'm wrong. I, it's Kareem's bit. It's got to be Kareem's It's Kareem's, Kareem's bit. a phenomenal comic. I Kareem's a phenomenal comic, and it had like... And, and but it had when his, I first saw his type it, of style probably. Yeah, and I'd never seen I had never I'd never seen a comic do that that fully. I don't know whether that's a problem around the country with road stuff. I feel like you know some more about like like the real road yes. than I do. Like how much is thievery? I was just shocked as like a new comic. I came from like the the you know the the Mulaney's and the Pete Holmes and like stealing jokes would be insane. But so to witness it at the same club in the same room was wild. As a person that did like the road road for a long, long time, there is things that are considered stock, right? Sure. And basically, if you want to do that bit, it's it's everyone's got given it a stamp of a thing that you can all we can all say. But like, oh, it, no one actually did that. You know what I mean? No one was like, you know what? Here's a bit. Everyone can have it. Like, literally just everybody Err. eventually... Like, one person stole it and was like, what are you going to do about it? And then someone yeah. else did that. And then they... And it just kept spreading. Till, sure. Until it became a thing where it's just like, yeah, do your uh, Michael Jackson impression. Sure. Right? Sure. Well, hey, what's caught in his throat? You know? And then everybody's doing that. Yeah. What is, what is caught in his... Th- <laughs> <laughs> Eagle's just like... Tell, I have a new us. idea. What is Michael Jackson? <laughs> it's that, uh, it's children's cum. If you wanna. Oh what? my god, that's the joke. Uh, Holy uh, shit! Uh, so there's gonna be baby dicks, but close enough. Uh, you got it. Yeah, I, I think I just made it better than theirs, but oh yeah, it's more original. <laughs> children's cum. Um, so then it moved to the location that I ended up joining at, which was that was better. That was a better location. Definitely better. Yeah, I just remember I went there. It had a green room. Sad. Small. And some of the comics who worked there were big. They were big. Yes. Rest in peace. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very yeah. physically. The, the, there was, they, they, didn't, they didn't walk very much. I mean, Kenny, Kenny Ortega, <laughs> rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yep. Rest in peace. Uh, he, his opening line, do we all remember it? He'd walk on stage. Made it. Made it. Man, <laughs> yo, he was a killer too. He was a ki- he was a killer. Really good at crowd work. I yep. studied him. Mm-hmm. I studied him and and Ken Boyd. I I always bring up Ken Boyd as like me. I feel like I Ken stole. Boyd? You know how the same way like Elvis stole from from black people in general. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel about Ken Boyd. That's I stole so funny. all my charisma from Ken Boyd. Man, he is like wow. So charismatic. Ken Boyd was nuts. Ken Boyd. Whenever people tell me I'm likable, I'm like, you don't fucking know likable. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Even watch a guy just take someone's food and then eat it, and then everyone liked it. That's Ken used to start sets. He'd be like, "Anyone got any gum? Anyone got any gum?" And he'd like chew gum gum in a cool way. Chew gum. Once in a while, when I'm feeling, when I'm in a club that I don't give a shit about, I will go up chewing gum, and I feel cool. And it's because I want to just be Ken Boyd, baby. I had to block him on Instagram. I've talked about this because I posted a picture of me and he said, damn, you got fat. Yep. And I was like, I don't want to be called fat on my Instagram. <laughs> this he is also- the most hilarious John Markle story I've ever heard. <laughs> he, he called me fat and I blocked him. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm going to be honest though. John Markle was the person that I've never seen him haze more than anybody else. Really? Oh, did he haze you a lot? Easily, well, dude, in the easily. beginning, in the beginning there was hazing. And again, like it's the kind of hazing where looking back, you're like, is some of this good? Because I see some comics behave in a way where I'm like, I wish Patrice O'Neill was around to tell you you suck. And instead, me and, and other comics were just texting about how much we hate you. And I, and, I, and I mean this in a very complimentary way, what I'm about to say. Because I've actually said this about you to others in a complimentary way. Uh-huh. Is I've never seen someone since I've been doing stand-up go from like essentially just bad to 
really fucking really good, like great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you have. Like when you came in that, there was some nights where I was like, oh, this nigga sucks. <laughs> but after every set, bomb, like you bomb. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. You write a joke in your laptop, and I thought, he's a psychopath. He's going to get good. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Sure enough, you got phenomenal. I remember when you beat me in that competition, and I went, I tipped my hat. I'm like, yo, he's fucking phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you fucking did it. Like, you, like, figured it out. And, and I know if Ken was making fun of you at that time, it might have just been when you were bad. Sure. Well, he used to but do. You got so good. Like, you worked at it. For the back of the room, he'd go, he'd go boo and word boo. That, that's For the wow. back of the room. Dude, one time. That's a lot. One time. <laughs> One time he bombed so badly, and then he got all the comics to wait outside the room so he could finally get an applause break because he wasn't going to get one when he got that's off That's what stage. Ken had. Wow, that's some hazing for yeah, that. It yeah, was, it was. I was like, really? And I was like, this is a little much, you know. Like, Props to, to you because you fucking, man, you figured it out on such a high level. Like, it was such a flip. Well, I just did so many spots constantly. there. Like, that's what, that's what whenever people were like, you're still working. It was like, I got, I was doing. Still working what? Oh, uh, <laughs> McDonald's! We're gonna have to leave out this. Last to work at McDonald's. I, I did. I did like truly. I feel like I did every check spot there for a year. Maybe I keep exaggerating that, but I feel like I did four check spots every weeknight on the weekends. I was doing six check spots. Christmas, I remember doing eight shows a day for like and no money. <laughs> And no, you love Christmas. No money. <laughs> I love Christmas. My you know, the Christian guy, I know. <laughs> and uh, you sacrificed your favorite <laughs> holiday for jokes. And like, I feel like, <laughs> I think what it did for me is like, I was doing like roast battle stuff and like figuring out like joke writing. And then that like also kept me from just being like jokey, nerdy guy. Because I remember I was, Ken Boyd was hosting a 1 a.m. show. He was hosting it, and he opened it, and he was talking about like, I like a bitch that when you, <laughs> when you finger her, she like licks the juices off off your fingers, and then he did like an act out where he oh, like, man, and, and, and act out his act out, so out, incredible, his miming, like he he could have gone to the Lecoq France clowning school. It was astounding how accurate it was, and he like did where him like him like sc- scooping up the the dribbles of the juices, and then lick, and he he put his whole hand in his mouth, not like comics would be like. You know, like fucking slurp on it, if, and then I went up there like. So I went to college for musical theater, and uh, fuck that camera died. Keep going, talk eagle. Yo, the 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 thing that that's amazing about it to me that like I hope people watching this can understand is that shit might sound crazy. That kills crowds. Like that in depth detail of an act out makes crowds lose their fucking mind. Dude, the like, risk. that's so funny yes. when you're on stage doing that much. Because it is a risk. You're you're making a fool out of yourself yes. for the sake of painting the picture for them. Fuck. He was a true clown, and like and like and not in the like mean way. In the no. real like, I cannot believe he could do the things he's doing. Yeah, like with his body. Yeah. All right. Well, if that camera fucking, I hate I hate tech page. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn Literally, this to I page. Do too. This is gonna be the oh, the new no. camera for page. This is gonna be like the worst angle. <laughs> Here we go. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Just gonna, not on just her. Let it go. <laughs> let it no, go. No, no, I will never let anything go ever. There we go. There you go. Great. Can't wait to upload all these files for Dave. So, um, <laughs> it's gonna have your. It's not. It's <laughs> not your podcast if your foot isn't in half of the, <laughs> the video. <laughs> it's true. Uh, uh, there's a guy. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Okay, so, uh, um, let's let's get into because there's someone we were gonna have on the podcast. A potential guest, and he was like, I can't. I'm in the middle of a lawsuit with McDonald's right now. No way. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's suing them, or they're suing him? I don't know. No, the uh, Ronald loves suing people. Direct quote. Uh, that's a he, direct quote. That's a direct quote. I don't he's like. Saying, why are we doing this podcast? I don't. I don't no, like. no. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna bleep it all. We're gonna bleep it all. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, guys, we are comedians. We're making up all of this. Yeah, yeah. This is None an improv this exercise. Is real. <laughs> None of it. Uh, so. so yeah, that was one thing. He was just like, I've done so many lawsuits. <laughs> I was like, in my life, and I was like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Interesting. I. Uh, so I'm trying to think of like. Like the worst. So let's let's we should bring up. Let me say the Bill Burr story real quick because this is a classic. I brought I classic this story. And I were you there? Were you there? I was not. I was that not was there. Wait, so there. right before you jump into this, I want to say something real quick. Yeah, if you don't mind. We are complimenting 
the Hall of Famers from McDonald's. This is very much us saying, like, they had things about their stand-up. That's immaculate. Like, just undeniably great, yes. talented performers. Everything we said just now was compliments. It's all like, let's just make that clear. Because I For think sure. a lot of people think of McDonald's and they think, yes. oh, these workers are like hacks or they're this or they're that. They're better than a lot of fucking comedians. It, I, I say this all the time about McDonald's. And what is really interesting about them is that of all the places now that are bloodsuckers that are just looking at your your numbers and your analytics and how many people you can draw and what your credits are, uh, Ronald walked in the room and went, wow, they're really loud right now. They really like this guy. That is absolutely true, and you don't get that damn near anywhere else. It's yeah. You would go in and go, is this person killing? Guess they're going to get more spots. Yep. <laughs> That's all that fucking matters. Yes. And the reason why I worked there so much is that for the first month I was there, I just did straight A for 15 minutes every single time. Yeah. And, yeah. and it... And every time he walked in, and he was like, whoa. And then next week, I had uh, 20 spots. Which know? easily is, what, 15 spots. cents? I mean, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when you think about minutes, yeah, it was 15 cents a minute, probably, for sure. Uh, yes, there's lots. There's And, and, and Kenny, uh, who I just, I do like talking about Kenny. It just feels like he, he was a, he died, he had COVID. Yeah. But he was a, an incredible crowd work comedian wow did some yeah. incredible crowd work he went through a phase in he was today's doing a, era he would have done great posting clips of his crowd work he would have fucking yeah but uh, if he would have posted them yeah it sometimes just doesn't click mm -hmm. for yeah. for people how to do that but yes of course i mean he could just control a room any any like bad room he could control and i think there's a thing of you have a lot of uh I call them Brooklyn comics. That's not exactly the exact term, but you know they care about jokes. They care about they they don't want anything to I don't be hacky. Think Brooklyn comics care about jokes at all. But they don't they don't want anything to be <laughs> hacky. Like there, there's a certain yeah, kind yeah. of comic that goes like if it's hacky, uh, I will proud sue me Brooklyn comics. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Ronald's the one that's gonna sue you. These Brooklyn comics, they yeah, the Brooklyn suck comic. my dick. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about. I feel like it's the closest to uh, a black room that we had in we, New York. It's hundred percent the closest McDonald's? to a black comedy club. What is? God damn it, dude! <laughs> <laughs> we need to get a jar <laughs> and all that. So money. I can lose even more money <laughs> before the lawsuit. That's the jar. The jar is for the lawyer. <laughs> uh, would you? Would you say? Do you think that's a true statement? That McDonald's it's like the closest is the blackest club comedy club in all of New York City, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. How would you define? Because I, I did a podcast recently where it was like it was like me and another white guy like stumbling over why it's okay to say a room of what the black room is. How would you define it exactly? There's black people in the crowd. Yeah, you go to uh, and fuck. What, <laughs> what, <laughs> you go to McDonald's on any given night, and it's majority black people in the crowd, yeah, which is kind of shocking. You don't 50, see other comedy 50, clubs like that. This is how I always used to say. And fifty fifty is. Huge. 50 50 is huge, man. There's the next closest club has like 10% black people in the crowd. Max. Yeah. That's all the minorities put in the 10. <laughs> you could actually yeah, I count. <laughs> you would do well because your dad's white, so you really fit. Yo, we out here. Perfect. We out here. I used to say McDonald's was almost a way to test out your jokes and make sure they were okay with black people. Or you like, let me sure. make sure I'm not up here, you know, shucking and jiving. I'm going to go to McDonald's and see if this is decent. I, I remember G I saw Gina Yashir super early, and she had a bit. Uh, it was it was about Chinese men in China, and like if the audience got kind of quiet, she'd be like, "Fuck you!" I performed that in China for a room of Chinese men, and for me, my rule was always: Would I be willing to, if I had anything about race, would I do it in a room where I was the only white guy in that room? And if I wasn't, then I wasn't confident in in the that's joke over the thing. And I, I feel like rule. that's a really true thing. But how would you describe, other than there being 50, 50, 50, or a majority black audience, what would you say in terms of like stylistically or what's more important or, or is there, what's the difference? I don't, I don't think there's a difference. There's I, no I difference. I think the only difference is uh, being genuinely yourself. They can smell a fraud. Sure. Like black people, black crowds smell a fraud, for real. The, also, the level of forgiveness is way less. Yes, uh, that's true too. They, if you are not good, 
there is no like, oh, let me spin this. Well, maybe this I, next we're, joke we're, will be good. No, they're they're done. They've yeah, heard, yeah, yeah. They, the forgiveness level is gone. It's very hard to win a black crowd back over once you've lost their trust. Yeah. Where white crowds are a lot easier to win back over. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But black people give it up way better, as you guys way know. Best. I mean, like when black people laugh. So much better. You feel like you're the best comedian ever. You're like, this is crazy. Who's the comment that says when black people laugh, they change locations? <laughs> and I think everyone like, who works at McDonald's. <laughs> everyone who works at McDonald's <laughs> said that at some point. Um, I had somebody like, give me crazy amounts of money in McDonald's once. There was a guy that came by. Th- yeah. There was a guy who came by for a while who was like the worst audience member. His kids would heckle. He'd heckle, and then he'd hand you a hundred bucks after the set every time. What was your Whoa. how what crazy money are you talking about? I have a really good money story from McDonald's. Yeah. I'm doing a late night show. It's like That's a, rare, by the way. A really good yeah, money story. Yeah, it's very rare. I'm doing a late night show, you know, one in the morning show, whatever, weekend. So it wasn't empty, but it wasn't sold out. And uh, there's a hood dude in the back with his girl counting money, stacks of money on the, on the table, like Monopoly money. Like he's like breaking it up into different stacks. And I know this. I'm like, oh, you're a drug dealer. You're trying to impress your girl, right? Cool. So immediately I go, fuck my set. I'm going to be like, hey, man, seem like you got lots of money. You got lots of money. Prove it. Give me some. And he just gives me a stack of money. He comes up to the stage and hands me like easily like a thousand bucks. And I just hurry up and get done with my set and leave immediately. (laughs) Because I was like, I don't want him to ask for that money back. Yo, that's so funny. He's clearly not from New York. No New York drug dealer would flaunt their money like that. And I was like, I am going to leave with this money as soon as I can. The second I got the light, I was like, have a good night, you guys. And I dipped. Incredible. That's so much money. Oh, and I was so broke at the time. Like, incredibly broke. Yeah. And it, man, it made me so happy. (laughs) You had to be broke to literally be like, hey, nice money you got. Could you give me some? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he just walked up to the stage and like smacked it on the stage and was like you a funny nigga and I was like thanks and I just like I hadn't told a joke I hadn't told a joke but when I asked to give money the crowd laughed and he thought like oh this guy's great and just gave me money so let's let's talk about the security at McDonald's that's Speaking one of my, of fa- people that's going some to my favorite stage. things right. so uh, uh, my man Kendall that, there's, that's one of them who was there? Someone else before There was a Kendall? guy with a mustache that wore a bulletproof vest that used to get changed in our green room. He would just come in and get com- down to his tidy whities, and then he'd put <laughs> on his bulletproof vest in front of all the women comics they had there. In front of all the women comics there. Uh, Why did he have a bulletproof? <laughs> <laughs> that is really freak. That's scary. And we and we and, and, and so every time he did it, I just would. I was the only one, and everyone hated him. Ex- and, and, but I found him really entertaining. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> What's the bulletproof vest for? Right? And, uh, like, and he'd be like, you know, you have to wear this actually if you're a security, actually in security here in New York. And it's like, that's just not true. But it's, he had like all these stories about being stabbed a bunch of times. And he would do these in his tighty whities that were like stained. <laughs> he, he'd be doing that like at a locker room, like leg on the chair, <laughs> just chilling for a security second. Security at McDonald's is sometimes they were really good, you know, like they're like tough guys. And then sometimes they're just complete pussies that would let everything happen. Yep. Yeah. Or like, yeah. Do you remember when uh when when blues got spit on? You guys remember that? Who got spit on? <laughs> blues. Is this the person we're talking we're talking about earlier? Another music genre? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> when she got spit on, uh-huh. comedians had to drag the fucking people downstairs and get into a fight because as, as, because security locked the door because they were scared. <laughs> <laughs> I I just remember Kendall there was one first Kendall he's always he's always watch your set so it would always be like hey love the new material and I was like cool did you see when the guy ran up to me on stage he's like yeah I didn't was that a new bit I was like no I was in danger why would that be a bit <laughs> I there was one there was one I just remember so distinctly it was there was like some I was very engaged. like methed out looking couple <laughs> And I think I said to the guy, like, you look like Steve Buscemi after the meth or something. Not Nothing great, but it got like, oh. And then when I left, he got like right up in my face. Nothing like an oh to instigate some shit. I hate when crowds oh. And and he like, as I when I got outside in, in the bar area, he kind of rushed up on me. And I like looked towards Kendall and he was making sure his girlfriend was signing the check. 
while he was like <laughs> in my face, like, <laughs> "You want to fuck with me? You want to fuck with me?" And I just thought that's that so encapsulates. McDonald's. It's just about the, it's just about getting that money, yes. and we could not have mattered. No. I mean, the their the security job was to let not let people out of the building. Their their job was not to protect the comedians, not to protect the comedians, and at all. And there's a I got charged on stage. Like someone walked on the stage to mess me up. I jump off the opposite st- side of the stage, and then I walk up. To Kendall outside after like running basically out of the room and just stood next to Kendall and he goes eh, and he started talking to me about whatever was happening in the news that day and I go you know I'm supposed to be on stage I'm like technically on stage right now there's nobody on stage right now because someone just charged me yeah and he was just like huh and I go huh <laughs> <laughs> like it got- literally was like uh we could not believe what's happening the craziest heckle I ever got was at McDonald's. I had a dude in the front row. I get done with my set. Packed house. Great set. Everything seems normal. Fine. You might have heard this story. He's like this fat hillbilly white guy. He just, I get the light and he goes, I'm tired of all this niggerdom. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it. All I could think was like, depending on how I respond to this, there's going to be a brawl. Right? Because it's a very black room. It's like, I don't know what to do in this scenario. So I was just like, I got the light. Just ignore it. Just do your last bit and get the fuck off stage. Yeah. So that's what I did, and then he tried to fight me outside. <laughs> well, he told you he was tired of it, and you did not <laughs> respect it. <laughs> uh, I, well, if, if, you go, if you go back to the uh, uh, old episode with Sam Morrison, he talks about a very sad... I mean, like, yes. this was a place where... This was a place, if you wanted to know, like, the, the politics of the rest of America and the world, you'd find them out. Absolutely. And, like, you know, to be a, to be a gay comic in this space, you had, to, you had to be a very particular kind of comic. You had to be assertive. You had to be aggressive. Because the moment you talked about anything gay, you were going to have some people mm-hmm. audibly go, stop this gay shit. Hey, yo. Pause. Pause. Oh, no homo. Yo, stop. Yeah. Well, I don't and, like, do that back home where I'm from. <laughs> it's like it's, a it's, wide it's, range of homophobia. Yeah. It's like it's not good, but it's an act, at least you get to know what the world is. Yep. You know, I mean, and I, I, I don't think he worked there again after that. No, he, he might, never came. What back, happened? But, what happened? Uh, he, he was just performing, and like I think someone said, if I believe, it was like no more of that gay shit. And then it they was started it like was the f. But yeah, he said it, or they said they said the f. No more of that f mm. stuff. Yeah. What if I said that's what we were going to call the club? <laughs> 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 then we had to believe it twice. <laughs> but but no, it was bad, and and uh, OC like came in to like help i guess but it wasn't quite in time no just you, you could be left hanging like when i was there You'd definitely be left you, especially with the check spot you could be left there and you, suddenly you're doing 25 minutes 30 minutes i, I was i've been on stage for 40 minutes i i always place. say like i got in super early it you know fucking couple months into comedy you don't have anything and i remember thinking like check spot eight minutes i can do eight minutes i was like it might not be the best eight minutes i got eight minutes worth of material and they were like, yeah, it's check spot. And I remember my first official check spot doing like 35. And you're just up there just trying to stay up there. You're like, I don't even, yep. I don't even know if I need to be funny at this point. I just want yeah. you guys to not throw stuff. And I guess I stay on stage. Like, I don't. Yeah. But again, that's why it was special. There's not that many clubs in the world you get that anymore. I think there was a time like when you hear about, I don't know, the seller back in the, the 80s. You might be on stage for a long time. Or you might do this many spots, or it might get this rowdy. But these days, there's no club you could work this much in New York. There's too many comics, yep. and that's why it was special. Yeah, spotlight blinking, microphone going in and out. I mean, it makes you good. <laughs> sure does. If you could, if you could do well there, you could do well anywhere. We did. I didn't have too many crowd work clips from there because I was scared if I left my phone in the back of the room, it would get stolen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about three weeks ago, I was comic. <laughs> I was working at McDonald's. Yes. Outside, had my phone. A kid yanked my phone out of my hand and just ran away. Oh my god! Uh-huh. Oh my god! Wait, you were on stage? I was not on stage. I was. Out, I was just out, I just walked the outside the club, woof, right out of my hand. <laughs> and it was so. This kid was so fast, and I chased him for two blocks before I realized, what am I going to do? I'm going to be this <laughs> this adult beating up a 16 year old black kid in the middle of the street. Like no one's going to understand what's happening. I mean. And, probably bleep that too but uh <laughs> we cannot have any extra bleeps in this episode it's gonna be all bleep i uh 
Like it was like like there was a moment where I was like, what if I catch him? What Yo, if I you're catch gonna him? Sleep a sixteen year old black kid, and they're gonna be like sixteen year old name of comedy club. Black kid? What? He's beating up a sixteen year old comedy club. <sighs> um, oh god, I forget what I was gonna say, but but okay, the Bill Burr story. Oh, what I want to say. So if you listen to Sam Morrison. You can find out what club we're talking about, maybe. If you listen to Kareem Green, we had a great story from Kareem Green. I don't Green, know what John Mark was talking about right now. I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, everything don't listen to those, actually. Yeah, you know, I take that back. Don't listen to them. Don't do any investigation. <laughs> Please don't. This is all made up. This is so, all, yeah, isolated. The, the Bill Burr story is, uh, and Usama was there. I, wasn't, I came later that night, and yes. I saw Usama look mad. I've never seen Usama look mad before. And, uh, Usama loves Bill Burr. Yeah. And so Bill Burr came. To be fair, he had a big mustache. He was filming uh, King of Long Island. Is it, what's it called? That, King, uh, of King of Staten Island. Island. Yep. And uh, he went up to the floor manager. And I've always said, I don't blame her. Because she's not running a comedy club. She's, she's running a, a restaurant. And she just has to keep it going. So Bill Burr came and he said... She's running a fucking madhouse. Can I do, can I do a spot? And uh, she's like, I can give you the email for the booker. And Bill Burr, biggest comic one of the top three, top five, still. And he, and he said, oh, I just sold out Madison Square Garden. No, she goes, where would I have heard you? And then he goes, I don't know. I sold out Madison Square Garden. She asked him, like, for his credentials. Uh-huh. And then and, he did. He gave them to and her. She, and she was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I've never heard it this way. Yes, that's wait, the real so story. she actually just didn't believe him. Uh huh. Yeah. Then someone behind, oh, that's then funny. Someone behind her went, "No, you're making a mistake," and she just goes, "Like she just did like a like a like a shake off." I believe you know the way Mark Wahlberg says, "If he was on the planes in 9-11, 9-11 wouldn't have happened. He would have stopped it." I believe that with Bill Burr performing at McDonald's, <laughs> that if I had been there, I would have been like, "No, a huge mistake is about to happen." We, you trust me. I stake my whole everything on this. Everything I built spot. up. Give him my spot. Because if they got one picture of Bill Burr on that stage, oh my god, it would have increased they eat ticket forever. sales forever. They eat forever. Ronald has no idea the mistake that was made. Well, that Ronald night. tried to rectify it. He went on Twitter the next day from McDonald's Twitter account and no said, way. Yes. It said, like, Bill Burr, so sorry for the mishap yesterday. Would love to have you anytime. And That's after he already had blasted him on the podcast, and he was all like, Bill Burr, you know, it's nice to get checked once in a while. You know, not yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. knows who I am. And that's, it felt, you know. Yeah, nice I remember know. that, yeah. He called the McDonald's on the podcast, too. <laughs> uh, and, and then I saw Bill Burr the next day. I was hosting at West Side Comedy Club, and I went over to Bill. I never met him, and I, I was going to bring him up. So I said, Bill, uh, I, I, I work at McDonald's. <laughs> We were all so upset that they they didn't know who you were. That's so insane. And he was like, "Okay." <laughs> and I was like, "Whoa, what the fuck? I wasn't I wasn't gonna ask you if I could open for you. I was just telling a story." Yeah. But he was he was very much like did not give a shit. He was he's been nice to me since I've met I saw him he's another nice time. Guy. But but he probably has something on his mind. But it, for me, it was like humiliating. Well, I think for him, it was a, a kind of a painful check. Like he was like, I thought if I walked in any comedy club, they would be so excited, and uh, I was so wrong. And I had like expectations of people freaking out, like this is a huge deal, and the carpet getting rolled out, and this that place is the was thing, like. Though. Once again, he did not walk into a comedy club. He walked into a fast food chain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mick. <laughs> um, so I was trying to think my other any any other uh, uh, stories from your time. Or did you want to read some of the Yelp reviews? I got, I, <laughs> these are my favorite. Now, we can't read about the one incident. Don't read them verbatim. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to riff them. But there's, there's, one, there's one like famous incident there that I want to have the person on the podcast to talk about. So don't quote any of those. You know the incident I'm talking about with the, the person who was uh, it's not. deformed slightly? That was a crowd work clip that's, that that's w- not, would not have done well. No, that's not. That, I don't know that what you deleted. guys are talking about. Oh, I'll tell you. There, there was an incident of someone in the audience uh, not looking great, maybe because of some kind of accident with fire, and then like uh, maybe they were being a tough audience oh member. Who's to say? <laughs> this is not funny at all, by the way. <laughs> 
Go ahead, continue. I'm just thinking of something funny I watched the other day as you're talking. Oh, what, another horrifying? This guy's just like, I, watched, I was watching like, bum fights. I watched like <laughs> Family Guy, and Family Guy is so funny, so innocently funny, and I was watching that, and that's making me laugh while you tell this story. Now continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, what's, what's your review? I was called the N-word. By <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to do one about Eagle right out the gate. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> What if Eagle wrote that? The Eagle wrote that about performing at the club <laughs> by a comedian, <laughs> and that is before he even went on stage. <laughs> before he went on stage, it's in. It has one. It has one star, and it says avoid like the play. <laughs> oh. All right. So are we ready Before for he went on stage. <laughs> that, oh, my God. Mwah. I feel like this review was written by a comic. <laughs> it's too funny. It was so – that's so funny. Oh, my God. So good. Uh, the manager sh- – Got into a physical altercation with a tourist family uh, on Saturday night because the customer made a complaint about how he mishandled the heckler. Wow. You fist think- fight. Literal fist fight. Oh, I wish I'd been there for oh, that. Oh, I was, I was there for that one. You were there? And, and he, he fought, like, like you know in the old school videos where, like, let him at him. Like, that kind of, <laughs> that, like that's the way that Sean tried to fight him. Uh, oh, sh- yeah? Wait, yeah, Ronald? like, uh, hey. Uh, Ronald? No, no, no. Put him up, not put him up, put him up, put him up, put him up. Like, like that? Yeah. Um, oh, my. I'm trying to think if there are any other fights. I mean, there's one big epic fight where this is where Kendall, Kendall actually, like, activated. Like, like the Hulk. Yeah. Wait, what like, happened? Oh, it was it was uh fuck man. It's uh I mean, I might as well say it and we'll bleep it. We're I'm go- we're going to have to go through this episode and bleep. A it's lot. uh uh so all right, you we're going to we're going to bleep this one. Effects. So this is it's uh it's it's I'm um, so they can't see my head. It's Aurora? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. This is my favorite. Jesus thing. Christ. I think to be honest, when we were saying this is yes. going to really change things, I think there is something where people are going to be like, this is a mystery, and it's very fun. We're going to make people go down a hole. There was a, there was a crazy heckler, and there was like a, a young son who was like jacked, and his his mom was a heckler, and Kendall went up and like, he got on stage, this young son, and Kendall like, <laughs> one arm, just knocked him off the stage. It was And there's video, there's different angles. It is incredible. It's an amazing story. You really could utilize it. If you utilized it the right way with social media, you, there, there's a restaurant chain where the waiter is like mean to you, like roasts you intentionally. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And if you advertise it as like, you want to see a fight break out? Come here. I, I, I think if they advertised that. it as the worst fast food <laughs> restaurant in the world, it would do great. Yeah. I also think that I also – can you imagine if they like tried to be worse? <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem the problem is if they advertise it as the worst it'll get worse and it'll probably get shut down <laughs> I'm astounded I mean for me the most degrading moments are like when the green room which was truly truly a closet with a bench on it mm-hmm. when they like started using that for storage of like oh, other we things. weren't allowed to be in the green room. That, like it was yeah. like moments like that where I felt like one day I'm gonna make a podcast episode about this club where I shit all over it. There's, there's and a- it, it really upset me too because they they make it so there's no green room and then they yell at you for being loud and you're like, if I would have had a green room where we can yeah. talk and be relaxed before getting on stage, yep. this wouldn't have to happen. It was, it. it <sighs> That, that was the degrading. I mean, I think when I look back, the reasons why I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm ready to – I think it deserves to be talked about is just because the ways we were, we were treated. Just the, like, the working for free for so long. You got to pay if you want, like, a water. <laughs> you got to yeah, pay yeah. for, like, well, anything. I was, uh, that was what I was just going to talk about, the water. So there was a – in the green room for a long time, there was a uh, – like a – like, whatever, the water thing that lets the oh, water out. Oh, a water cooler. A water cooler. Yeah. And – they stopped paying to fill up the water anymore. And so one day, uh, Richie Redding walks into the club early to pick up his check. And uh, he just sees the manager having a hose and is filling up the water container with the hose. No way. Yeah. It's like how cholera spreads. And that's exactly <laughs> what he said. He was all like, 
can I have a bottle of water since I know where it comes from? And they're like, no. And he's like, well, that's the final straw. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. got a final straw story with them. What was your final straw? I can't remember. I See, can't for me, I, 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 really, I really hung in there, and I was like, I, I was doing less, and I was canceling. You know what? Final, final straw is always light with them, because you'll come back. <laughs> you'll come sure. back and jump on stage. Well, I remember people being fired. I remember, I remember people being fired, and then they'd be back. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, I learned a lot about like, how the world works from that, from that <laughs> place. But for me, my final straw, well, I remember, so Kenny, Kenny Ortega, rest in peace, he was on stage, and they, they dropped checks on him. And he and we talked about the check spot before you got here, just explaining it. And he walked off stage, and he's like, and I mean, he worked there five days a week for years and years and years, seven shows. And uh, so I I went there once, and like there was a combo of like the mic wasn't working, which was pretty standard, and it had like a feedback thing for a second, and my ear was ringing in pain, and I almost stepped off the stage and got hurt, and then they dropped checks, and I said, you know what? And ultimately, though, I would have stayed, but there were, the audiences started feeling so bad, I said, I'm not even learning anything. I well, would put well, up that's, with a lot. See, that's, that's the problem a lot of times with that, you know, with McDonald's is like it, it makes you better on one side of stand-up. It makes you a better performer. It makes you more confident. It makes you ready to deal with things on your feet. You know what I mean? Like ready to go at all times and know how to like improv shit. But it's so bad for writing. Like it's, it's so incredibly bad for writing that if you don't leave at a certain time, it can almost turn you into a hack. Like, it, like, it, like, because it, it, you're like, it's sink or swim, and that's not good for writing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's not good for writing. You'd have to fight. I think you just would have to fight to be like, to not kill. You have to, yeah, you have to be okay with kind of being the worst on the show sometimes, even though you might not be the worst comic. I, I feel that way all the time. Yeah. I go, I think I'm, I did the worst on the show today, but I'm the only one that, Tried something. You could possibly be the best comic in reality, but the worst comic on the show. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think they should advertise it as the, the, probably the only club right now in New York where you can go see people do a hack Indian accent for a big <laughs> chunk of their set. <laughs> in their white. If, that, if, that's, <laughs> if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, Paige, do you have any questions about us working at this Club. So I've never been to McDonald's before. Uh-huh. Would you recommend that I go to McDonald's at least once? Yes. Fortunately, but not 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 now. I mean, it's it's not what it was. Oh, it's true. It's really. I had a time weird. machine. It's not what it. No, nowadays the, it's a, just a different thing. The the caliber of the people. Not to say that people there are not getting funny because they are getting funny, but there was a level of that these guys were at. That work there at like the whatever the thirty hour the thirty shows a week guys. Well, well, I'll say it so like, unbelievable. I'll say it like this: like when we were working there, it seemed like every two to three months a comic would graduate to the cellar. You go from literally the worst club to the best club, yeah, like a direct route. It was like a weird training ground to get to the cellar. It was like every two or three months a new comic was like moving to the cellar, and like it was just like. There's strong comics when we were working there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was highly competitive. And that's what I was saying. Like now, it doesn't feel like that as much. Uh, it, there was a, but it was 30, sh- 30 shows a week in front of three hundred people, who were mad, who just got scammed, and you know, like <laughs> that's my go-to story about that about McDonald's. I will say they do numbers like a motherfucker. Like they sell. Like they sell I mean, back then, those rooms, those those big rooms would be fucking packed, packed. And on a Saturday night, they'd be they'd be white hot. I mean, like, especially at that early stage of my career, how, how big was that big room? Three hundred. Three hundred. I mean, there'd be times it'd be sold out. Yeah. I mean, I'd be I I'd be before, I have no business for for three hundred people at two years in a year in, and I would. Yeah. And not, and, and not for twenty five minutes, which is what would happen a ton. Yeah. You're headlining suddenly. You're like, <laughs> yeah. God damn, someone fucked up. My do you still talk to Ken Boyd? I mean, I haven't heard about Ken Boyd. So I know he does the comics. Once, in a, once in a blue moon. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I uh, think I might have unblocked him when I felt like I'd lost <laughs> enough weight. But there you go. He, I remember once he, he commented, he commented on, I posted a video of me from hip hop class and he commented like, damn, what a homo. And I had people message me like, hey, does your friend understand that that's a derogatory term? <laughs> And then, and so this was, I was trying to get a tape for America's Got Talent. This is my Ken Boyd story. I was trying to get a tape for America's Got Talent. And at the time, Ken would bring me on stage by saying, this next comic is the gayest guy in the entire world. This next comic is the gayest guy I've ever met. I, Gianmarco Sarezi. 
It was the most hazing I've ever seen any comic go through. And and so I said to him, I said, hey, man, fan of your work, big fan. Thanks. Thanks for keeping me strong. Thanks for keeping my ego in check. So I'm trying to get a tape for America's Got Talent. Would you mind, just for this next one, just this next one, to not bring me on stage by saying I'm the gayest comic you've ever met in your entire life? And he was like, okay, man, I got you. And then he went up. And he called me the F word. <laughs> <laughs> and I submitted it. Because <laughs> I thought, well, now I got my like sob story right there. I clearly I've been harassed at my workplace and uh, didn't get it. <laughs> didn't get it. Bro, yo. You know, you know what America's Got Town said? You know what they wrote back? They said Sorry, too gay for our show. <laughs> like, they're like, who's the host? <laughs> <laughs> who's that host? That God damn, that was so funny. <laughs> yo, I'm not the type to be like, yo, this is a bit. You got to put this on stage. You got to put that on stage. Like, I know. That's so funny. Oh, my I God. Know. The only problem with the bit, and, and again, like, like I, I don't say the F word on stage. And I think the problem is when you tell a story where it was said, it feels so lame in its own way to not say, say the story that happened. And but at the same time, I just it's it's people just react to, it's it's it just is too, you know. That's fair. You know. Boy, is that a funny podcast story though? Oh my god. But that's that's what's, it's it's like that's what most frustrated. So only other people can call me the F word? Great. That's it's cool. It's funny and it's yeah. sad. It's sad and funny. It's like this weird like that's like a prior esque story, dog. That shit is like sad and funny. Right. But <laughs> maybe strong, maybe strong. Unbelievably. Like I, That's I so thought, fucked I up. I thought about it all the time. And I it's partly why I would roast Ken as much as I did was because You got some great roasts about Ken. I would burn him as mu- because it was mostly because he was coming at people all like you know, like so hard that I was like, I'm the only one who will do this. I feel like working at like I feel like I do. So funny how people's Scott. experiences with people are different. Oh yeah, he loved you. <laughs> sure. I. <laughs> he was like, "This is my brother, <laughs> dude." I just remember him being so. I remember because he didn't give me. He didn't do the bad openings, but he would absolutely give me the bad get off stage. Like so, if I got off stage, she's like. Guys, he has AIDS. You know, I'm so sorry. Like, you know, I love like, saying for you. Do you remember what I said to you? Sometimes, if if I would, if you'd bring me on, I go give it up for Lucas. He's got to go back out and sell some more tickets. Yes, but we're really happy to have him. And sometimes, sometimes it was just fucking right on the money. <laughs> they would lose their mind. But it was. I looked really homeless then. Too. Then, yeah, back yeah, then, yeah. Back then. <laughs> and, Unlike now, where I look totally <laughs> kempt. Um. Anything else, Paige? It's it gorillas. I don't know. Um. I mean, <laughs> it was it was a special. I I just miss what it was. I mean, it was a special time in my life. I was gonna say like I do feel like, you know, I I grew up in a somewhat diverse childhood, but not not you know, private school, all these things. Working at a we're like Jewish white kids, McDonald's, there were regular Jewish white, white kids. kids. We're working at McDonald's. Diverse, like <laughs> like. <laughs> I just feel like I feel honestly like I learned how to I have jokes about race and like I feel like not to be too narcissistic but I feel like they're good I feel like they're like nuanced and like of a certain opinion I think it's because I felt like I just spent years working with with black comics and comics of different race and we were all talking about that on stage and there was just like just it was just I got a I got a perspective from working Uh I got a perspective from working at McDonald's <laughs> that that was just just unique that I don't think I would have gotten anywhere else. And and you know what? And I want to I want to I want to make sure to be specific about this. A wide range of black people. We're like a lot of people will like like do like Brooklyn and they'll be like I I have black comedians on my show. Somebody booked me for a show the other day and it was my favorite way I've ever been booked for a show. It was a black person booked me for a show in Brooklyn and he said, "I'm booking I'm booking you for this show in Brooklyn." Because a lot of Brooklyn shows book black people. I'm trying to book niggas. And I was like, dog, that's actually really profound, though. 
Because like <laughs> I'm gonna start sending that to people. No, it is. No, it is because you know they're always like, I'm looking for a a, a, a a black comic or I'm looking for a woman for the show. If you said that, it, I'm saying, like, there are like you know these rooms in Brooklyn where they're like so progressive and they're like we have like black comics and it's like don't get me wrong, like they're black. You can't take black away from somebody. They're black, of course. But there is a certain type of black that they stay away from. And I'm sure. like, that shit is gross. Like, and and at McDonald's, I almost said it. At McDonald's, they had every type of black. Yes, but mostly, but I, mostly, mostly the other type of black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mostly what? Uptown. Yeah, say it, yeah. Lucas. What Up, type? Uptown. Of- <laughs> I don't. I didn't laugh at this. I did not laugh at this. That's not funny, and I don't agree with it. Yo, you, yo, you ever seen that thing? They tear Chris part, Chris Rock apart because he because he sat there when uh, Louis said the N word. And yeah, that and was people hate that. So it's like a thing you always I mean, have to I be conscious it's, of. It's as HBO. A black comic. It's Ricky Gervais, Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, yep. and Louis C.K. And Louis, like Louis, had some bits where he said the word, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm sure he got he you know, he worked on the Chris Rock show. He had a, he had a, mm-hmm. a strong relationship with Chris Rock. Yeah, but him. And Chris were saying it, and then uh, uh, Ricky Gervais kind of said it, but you could tell yeah. he had like a little, a little he was a little nervous, a little about like it. he was from England, so it was like yep. he didn't fully know the battle. And then Jerry was like, "I'm not. I saying talk this about at all. cotton balls and and uh, umbrellas. Like <laughs> this is I'm not cotton balls. Sounds pretty racist to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think the reason why people are so mad at Chris Rock in that video is because Ricky Gervais has a good time with it. Like, it's because there was, like, a white guy in the room going, this is very pleasurable. Well, the problem is, and this is what I always say to defend Chris Rock in that moment, is it's, like, people are just so unrealistic on what they want to happen. What do you want Chris Rock to do? In the middle of an HBO production, punch Ricky Gervais in the face? <laughs> It'd be funny if he, just, if, he just, if he just punched Ricky and said, Louis can say it. <laughs> Uh, that would have been fun. And they were hazing Ricky the whole time. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Like, Louis, Louis had one bit that I feel like is, that used it, that I feel like is a gold standard stand-up comedy bit. Oh, it's a great bit. And then the, about, about the word, you're just making me say the word in my head, which yeah. is like a brilliant bit. And then he had one where I was like, okay, you just, you just yep. said the word. You made the <laughs> shit out of that coffee. I don't like know if you remember that. I one. like that one. I don't know. He has I like, like four Yeah, but, it's, <laughs> but it really is like, whoa. <laughs> you're getting away with it. Even even didn't Neil Brennan say he stopped? I don't know, man. I don't know. I I can't stop thinking about the simple thing that it's not to go back to it of how people's experiences with people are so different with the Ken Boy thing because it is true. It's like the stories you're telling me are brutal. That's so fucked up. Yeah. And in my head, all I hear is, "What up, man? You like my little brother, man? Yo, you know what I'm saying?" This next comic coming to the stage, man. I swear he like my brother right here, man, right here. Hello, yo, he's the man. He the future. Eagle Wit. And I'm like, Jesus, it's two completely different experiences. Yeah, yeah. But they like later on, they all they all made me feel special, like later on. They would say oh, something. They said something to the respect of like a game recognized game. Oh, that's nice. But and, and it felt good. But but Ken Ken's a he's a tough guy. Because I, I could be like sometimes like you know, sometimes I'd be in a bad mood, and he would be—he just would fuck with you no matter what. <laughs> and but he was so charming, like he truly could make me like smile when I was like wanted to fucking kill him. Yeah. And he would just still like make me like laugh despite myself. I mean, I—I I, I don't think I, I, charisma-wise, like I'm—I'm I'm talking like Eddie Murphy, like just bleeding charisma, just astounding talent. I—I I, I always think about him, just one of the most talented. Yeah, one of the most talented comics I've ever seen on a raw talent level, just like yeah. charisma. Yeah. I remember Kenny Ortega, rest in peace. He he was at one point he was going through a phase. Where he was trying crowd work. He would ask the audience member, "If you had to fuck an animal, what kind of animal would it be?" Oh my god, I remember this. Man, it was not good. That was my bet. That was, <laughs> that was my bet, and I was doing it for a while. And then he came in and he ripped the thing off of it, and he was like, "What is up with that?" And then he did it, and then he just started doing it. And that's what I'm talking about. It's the only place I've ever seen where people just took your things. I was a bit. I was doing. I was so mad. Can you imagine? Can this. you can you imagine if he, if he tried that with me? If, if Kenny Ortega waddled on the stage and he said, oh, "Made it." So I went to college for musical theater. <laughs> No, I was so mad. I, I met, that one was especially upsetting. Uh, there was a thing where I did where, where I was talking to somebody, and then I would do like a crazy monster voice back at him, and then I started noticing people doing that one. 
Here's the thing, man. It's weird. It's like, on one hand, I thought this was going to be like bashing McDonald's. No, but it's, it's weirdly like a fun time in your life. Like, it's yes. like a good memory. It's like uh, something about McDonald's was like good for you. I think I it's like know. going to rehab. Like, you're, you are, uh, like, afterwards, you're like, I'm now sober. You know, like, my life's better now. Sure, I personally can't connect to that metaphor, but if you say so, I believe you 100%. I believe you so much. Or prison. Is prison, does that work? It would be funny if you constantly were comparing things to rehab. <laughs> it's like going to a methadone clinic. A lot of people there are pretty cool when they're not on heroin. So let's go on to, this is our, uh, let me just turn this down. This is our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Uh, I feel like we can do this here. This doesn't have to be McDonald's specific. Things, there's something that needs to stop at comedy clubs in general or any comedy club. And for me, I'll go first, is that I may have said this on the show before, but so many comedy clubs I go to have pictures of mostly dead comedians on the walls. And not just dead comedians, but comedians who would have never performed at that particular club at any stage in their career. (laughs) Like, what is Rodney Dangerfield doing in an Oklahoma City loony bin? And that club closed, so it's okay. (laughs) But it's it's also just like a weird... It's just a weird vibe to walk in and be like, oh, they're dead, they're dead. You know, no one wants to see Robin Williams hanging from a doorknob the second time round. (laughs) 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 (laughs)
I'm trying to get uh, their waters for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Paige, you've been to enough comedy clubs. What do you hate about comedy clubs? What's something you... This has got to stop. As an audience member, it's yeah. when when you go to a venue that doesn't have assigned seats, but there's somebody t- checking tickets at the door, and then like without asking you, they sit you in the front. Yeah. Mm. And that makes me really nervous. I know... I know people don't like it, but the problem is if it's not sold out, no one that's would fair. sit in the no front. One that's fair. In the front. We, I was at, I was at uh, Good Nights, and I was trying to get photos for a specific like pose for a flyer, and it's, but we hired a photographer, and then no one was in the front row, and it was just like, and it, it, there was enough people there, but no one was in the front row, and I was like, we can't take these pictures. We can't have empty chairs at the front of the show. But you guys make it scary to sit in the front row. I listen. I know. <laughs> Yeah. I know, I know, it's a real conundrum. <laughs> but I did a club recently where you could pick your seat in advance. And there were some seats where it was like three people at a four-person table. And I'm like, who's going to get that fourth? No one's going to buy that ticket. Yeah. You know, ah, I won't go to this show then. Yeah. I don't want to be the one person at the table. Yeah. I think nowadays, like, I will, if somebody tries to do crowd work on me, I'll, like, give them, like, carrots to work with. But then... If the comic doesn't do anything constructive with it, if they're just like, oh, cool, and then they like move on to something else, I'm like, like, what was it for? Sure, sure. <laughs> but you'll give them, that's nice of you to give them a carrot. Well, because I know. Like, I know how it works. I know what sure. they're trying to do. But when you have, like, people up in the front that just, like, do not want to interact, like, that's even worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so, I don't know. What do you think? It's like... Would you rather have nobody sitting in the front or would you rather have like the worst person in the world sitting in the front? I, I, I would I, like there to be a bouncer to kick that person out. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not going to happen. That, that's you know? the problem because yeah. like, the person who like really wants to do crowd work is also bad. Yeah. For me, I mean, the worst is people who lie. They want to like, they're like, I'll say something crazy. They try to say something funny. They're like, they have their own jokes in their head set up. And, and also good. they can't improvise. So you ask them a second question. They're like, oh. <laughs> and you're like, they never yeah. plan that deep in. Yeah, they're just the gynecologist. Yeah, that's all. That's their yeah, yeah, as yeah. far as they got a gynecologist with no weird stories. Yeah, they're like yeah, it's yeah. actually all been fine and normal. Yeah. Um, all right, our final segment, which I think we can make McDonald's specific. You better count your blessings. Where did you get? You better count your blessing. I think this is, I mean, we've kind of said some of this, but we can say maybe someone we're thankful for at that club or something we're thankful about it. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just do it again. I, I, I do think of Kenny Ortega from now time to time. Uh, I went to his funeral. We did. We did. Yeah, yeah. It was in Harlem. And uh, it was tough, man. He, he, he had this vision of like, what what he thought was going to happen and it was hard because everyone everyone in this business myself included like has visions of what we think are going to happen that that sometimes they're accurate sometimes you're like i don't know and he was one of those like he would say like i could i could get in the cellar if that was the path i wanted to go down and part of you wanted to be like i don't think so i i don't think the thing you're working on here is going to get you past there and it was tough but he was a real comic. He cared. He had a car. It said Comedy Ken on the front. He did real road gigs. And ultimately, like, you know, it might not be the career that I would have wanted, but, but I think you do comedy long enough. You do respect the good comic who does the cruises. You do respect the good comic who does colleges. They are, even if you don't know if it's the joke you really think is worth telling, they're making groups of strangers happy for a moment and giving them a good night and i think like this is why sometimes i i hate like the the vultures and the comedy critic and vulture like the 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 magazine where it's like they don't ever celebrate those comics and they are doing great things and they are bringing happiness and and you know some of them are hacky and some of them say some shit they probably shouldn't be but ultimately they're making a lot of people have have a good night and uh you know, I respect I respected Kenny, and I respected his his work. So yeah, that's my blessing. Damn, that shit that shit got deep. That shit yeah. was beautiful. Yeah, that and I said, I said I said it it never worked on stage. But I said when I met McDonald, I said uh, I did it as Facebook. We passed. I said when I met McDonald's, I know Kenny is in a better place. 
That's good. No, um, he, he's looking down at the audience, and so he's like, oh, I would be way better. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to Jesus like, what animal would you fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then God's like, you know that was Lucas's thing, right? <laughs> uh, any blessing, any any moment, any person? Of, of that place? You know what? They have paid my bills uh, when I am not have not uh, been able to pay my bills bills before yeah so hell yeah that's a good blessing it's, it's a great blessing uh honestly i wouldn't be the comic i am today without that place i, yeah. don't, I don't think any anybody any comic who's gone through mcdonald's would not be a stronger comic without it it truly makes you a stronger comic there's parts of your game that you just won't get in other places no. yeah so you know if you know, I I think every little percentage of you is needed to do something great and stand up and have a great moment or have a great joke or have a great performance when you need it or an audition or something. And it's like I'm sure there's a small percentage of that that maybe not even that small that comes from McDonald's. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, Paige, do you have a blessing? I didn't work at McDonald's, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a blessing in and of itself. Yeah. It's the blessing, ladies and gentlemen. This is the death. Oh, let me just say real quick: if you dug this. I do feel like I want to do more more McDonald's and Beyond stories with comics. So let us know. Share it with your friends because I might have fucked up the video uh, uh, for part of it. So so tell everyone. Again, join the Patreon. Patreon.com slash downside. And I'm sorry for all the bleeps. And, uh, and you know, sound off in the comments. Which animal would you want to find? <laughs> let us know. Lucas can build this into a full hour. <laughs> Please. And, uh, you know. I want to fuck Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> that's the it <laughs> and, and just, just remember if you got a man you got a woman you got a significant other let them know they're the luckiest person in the goddamn world this is the downside one two three downside you're listening to the downside the downside with John Marco Cerezi Tell him, Russell. Subscribe to The Downside right now. Where? Down here. Or here. We don't know, but just do it. Or also, what else could they do? They could follow the Patreon. They could subscribe to the Patreon. Ah, no! Patreon.com. Too much pressure.